And now it's time to put on hold and play cheesy music to this week's Idiot Extraordinary. Alfonso Rachel is the host of Zone Nation on PJTV. Don't react, it's not as impressive as it sounds. He makes videos extolling the virtues of nutwing religious conservatives over liberals, atheists, and those wacky libertarians. The fail has to be heard to be believed. Most Americans used to call themselves Republican or Democrat, but these days more call themselves independent. But what does that mean exactly? I'm not a Democrat or a Republican, I'm just independent. Translation, I'm too lazy to examine what defines both sides. But to make myself sound enlightened and above the fray, I'll claim to be an independent. Yeah, right. Or maybe they have studied what both sides are in favor of and concluded that they're both so full of bogons it's a wonder they don't explode. I totally understand. Too many Democrats and Republican representatives suck. People reject them and claim to be independent. But let me be a little more specific as to why they suck. Democrats are typically associated with being liberal and they suck for being liberals. Republicans are typically associated with being conservative, but they suck because they haven't been being conservative. Oh, right. Conservatives suck because they're not enough of a backwards bigot who undermines science and uses government to intrude on our personal lives so they have no business being. Gotcha. Y'all, libertarians are just liberals that don't have a love-hate relationship with capitalism. If by that you mean we think people should be left alone to live their private lives and conduct business as they see fit, as long as they don't interfere with the right of anyone else to do likewise, then yeah, so? The Constitution does not say that the government can tax the fruits of our labor or impose an income tax. Uh, yeah, it does. 16th Amendment. This dipstick's not one of those conspiracy nut bars who thinks the 16th Amendment wasn't properly ratified, is he? Of course, the 16th Amendment wasn't ratified until 1913, but before then, you still could have a federal income tax. It just had to be apportioned among the states based on the census count. All the 16th Amendment really did is remove the apportionment restriction. And anyway, libertarians are against the income tax, so I don't even know where he's coming from with this completely wrong claim in the first place. Pretty much only on the fiscal aspects do libertarians identify themselves with conservatives. Yeah, and that's a feature, not a bug. Other than that, they blow their nose with the Constitution. Whether they're blowing snot into it or rolling it up to snort the cocaine they think should be legal. They want drugs legal, prostitution legal. Oh, and where in the Constitution is government given the power to restrict those things? Maybe this clutch fork shouldn't go taking the constitutional route with people who actually want to follow it while wanting to ignore the enumerated powers to pass the bogosity he thinks should be passed. They want defense spending cuts? Yes, because we could cut it by 90% and still have the biggest military on the planet. Just how many times do we need to be able to invade the entire world anyway? Well, you're getting the idea. Let's skip ahead to the really big fail. And when you take this back to human society, you know, the fact is, is over the past 30 years, crime rates have gone down. Sex crime rates have gone down. Now keep in mind, condom sales have increased, and prescriptions for birth control pills have increased. And I don't mean for just control and acne. The reason why sex crimes are going down is because consensual sex is going up. Even if that can be shown to be true, isn't that a good thing? The fact that consensual sex means fewer rapes is an argument in favor of it. Or does this Axelrod really think it's better to be raped than have consensual sex? As much as I respect Reagan, I get tired of hearing the quote that the government is the problem. No, it isn't. The problem has become the people who put these people in power. We get the government we deserve. Oh, here we go again. More of this blame the victim nonsense in order to let your own pet politicians off the hook. We the people did not put these people in power. We put them in charge of a limited government, and they broke our agreement, the Constitution, and seized more power by force. And this Pinion's wonderful conservative politicians had a lot to do with that. So, back to these independent libertarian folks. While America ranks 25th in math, 14th in reading, and 17th in sciences, these people are hung up on kids expressing themselves. Where you go to a high school now and there are thousands of different possibilities. There are, you know, goth punks who are also Christian and skaters who do this and that and b-girls who are really boys. I mean, it's just exploding all over the place. Uh, and, and why is this good? A lot of people would say, oh, this is... 
evil. Yeah, no, I mean, people, people say that all the time. The reason why it's good is because it allows us as individuals to do things that we want to do. You go to school to get educated and not indoctrinated, by the way. These kids are fed a poor sense of priority. You go to school to learn, not for a fashion show. Now, as a conservative, I encourage expression. You want to wear funky clothes? You want to have a hairstyle that makes you look like a cartoon? More power to you. As long as your report card has straight A's on it first, and you actually understand your lesson and not just memorize notes for a test. If you got that down, then I think you've earned the privilege to express yourself within reason. Piercing your ears and stretching them out wide enough to fit a hamster wheel in it would be an example of not being reasonable. But these cats put precedence on expression. No, these kids need to be taught to handle their business first. How dishonest can this shift knob get? This was one segment from one episode of Stossel. Stossel has done a lot of railing about our bad educational system. He even has a one-hour special on it, which he updates every so often, called Stupid in America. Spending a lot more time on that means he is not putting the precedence on expression over education. But then, dishonesty on that level is exactly what we've come to expect from conservatives, isn't it? I thought this panel got on my nerves. Oh, this mutant analogy. If you think back to the early 50s or something, uh, you know, there were blacks and whites. Uh, then you have somebody like uh, Tiger Woods, who will put aside the sex addiction for now, but he, when he rose to prominence, he called himself a Cablin Asian, that he was a hybrid of uh, Caucasians, of blacks, of Indians, and of Asians. And that's more what we are. We're mongrelized, we're hybridizing, and we're constantly experimenting and trying out new ways to express ourselves or to show ourselves. Oh. So because my blood is a mix of Nubian blood and Filipino blood, I'm a mutant? I'm pretty sure I still qualify as a human species. There's no mutation as far as I know. Say mutant crankshaft, he said hybrid. And I got news for you, sunshine. You are a mutant. Each and every one of us, including you, has anywhere between 50 and 150 mutations in our genome, base pairs that don't match the genomes of our parents. And yes, you can be a mutant, as we all are, and still be the same species. It's only a new species when a population, not an individual, mutates and evolves to the point where they cannot maintain stable fertility with members of another population. You know, for someone who went on and on about how we need to be educated, you really didn't do a good job educating yourself on this, did you? Just to show you that this staggering amount of fail isn't an isolated instance, let's listen to parts of another of this Bolt Caps videos. If you want to see a display of a person whose glowing performances shows the result of hard work, not just as a person of color, but as an American, Obama wouldn't be that example. But gold medal winning gymnast Gabby Douglas, who proclaims her faith in God, would be. And remember Obama, the head of the Democrat Party, has said, we are not a Christian nation. Well, our founding fathers said the exact same thing in the Treaty of Tripoli, just as George Washington turned the presidency over to John Adams. Quote, As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. This was ratified by the Senate and the President as a treaty under the authority of the Constitution, making it the supreme law of the land under Article 6. Not only was it never repealed or overturned, the text of the treaty was published in the newspapers of the time, and there is not the first indication of any public dissent from this clause. That is a foreshadowing of this country no longer being free to be a Christian nation. This statement is pure nonsense. It's like talking about a tree being free to be a deciduous forest. Only individuals have rights. What this gudgeon pen is doing is playing the age-old, poor, oppressed me card that many Christians like to play when we tell them they're not allowed to use the government to force their ignorant, outdated, Bronze Age standards on the rest of us. I don't dig politics, but I do dig God and his gifts such as liberty. Liberty is a gift from God? Then explain Romans 13. You know, that bit about how we always have to obey those in power no matter what because God put them there to rule over us? Read that bit? Hmm. Maybe they don't have that part in that abridged, illustrated children's Bible with the colorful pictures that this cotter pen's apparently reading. Giving God the glory is the utmost of humility. Right, because nothing says humble like saying God chose you specifically to win. Sacrifice making this about yourself and give God the glory. And that's not for God's sake. 
It's for ours. It keeps us from making it all about us, self-focused and self-righteous, which is a plague to humanity. Yes, because God has a plan, and that plan apparently involves helping Olympic athletes win gold medals while small children starve to death in Africa. What exactly is wrong with people taking the credit for something people did? Why do accident victims praise and thank God for helping them while saying little, if anything, about the rescue workers, doctors, and nurses who actually did something to actually help them? What's self-focused or self-righteous about that? The self-righteous thing is to claim that God's on your side and wants you to win more than those other competitors. If you could actually prove that God did anything at all to help, the Olympics would ban prayer as a performance enhancer. How is it any kind of plague to recognize the people who help us all the time? All the scientists, inventors, entrepreneurs, workers, teachers, and everyone else who helps us, directly or indirectly, every minute of every day, they don't deserve any of the credit at all? And how do you know it's the Christian God doing all of this? How do you know it's not Allah, or Zeus, or Quetzalcoatl? Isn't it the very epitome of a self-righteous flange nut to insist that it's your God and not anyone else's doing all these favors for people? To ooze smug self-righteousness from every poor while accusing others of the same may get virtual high fives from people who already agree with you, at least the ones whose minds don't work by way of reason and intellectual examination. But you aren't going to convince anyone else. In fact, if anything, you're just going to push people away. Which may be the greatest service you've made to humanity. If nothing else, it's enough to get you recognized as this week's Idiot, Idiot Extraordinary! Extraordinary.